Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. One of my favorite things to do is expose new software to you guys on this channel, especially free and open source software. And today I have one doozy of an application. It is called Graphite. This is right now, the closest thing you can think of it is Substance Designer meets Inkscape. If you can put your head around that idea, this is a node driven or graph driven vector graphics application, sort of like Adobe Illustrator or uh, Affinity Designer or Inkscape, but with a workflow more like Material Maker or Substance, it is a very, very cool application. Right now, it is actually only available in Alpha. So this is Alpha 4 version. So you're going to run into some bugs and glitches for sure. Uh, in terms of availability, we'll get back to that in just a second. But pretty much no matter which operating system you're working with, you can get a hold of Graphite. Again, entirely free and entirely open source. So what is this all about? Well, let me show you with one of their examples. So I'm going to come up over here and I'm going to open up one of their demo scenes and you're going to see it right here. So I have this um, leaf pattern. Nothing too special there, right? It's made up out of a network of nodes. Each one, so you can see, uh, maple leaves and uh, oak leaves and morph together and so on. But where this gets really impressive is right here. Boom. And this is what you're ultimately creating when you create your world. So you're creating these node graphs which create your scene. So you're thinking to yourself, well, why the hell would I want to do this? This seems needlessly complicated. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this percentage value over here. I'm going to turn off the node graph so I have it set over here. We can notice, take a look at these guys, and this is the percentage of season, for example. And what I can do is do that. So procedural driven vector graphics. That is really, really awesome stuff. So you can do some really interesting work. The world of nodes, you know, we got nodes, geometry nodes in Blender have expanded into all of Blender's node driven. Material Maker is a node driven material program like Substance Designer. Substance, of course, has all this node driven stuff in as well. This is the same sort of thing, but for vector graphics. You can see all these various different pieces go together. Uh, you can grab any one of these anytime uh, and then um, switch it out. So instead of the fill being red, I could make it blue like this. Uh, and I'm not actually sure what I'm filling here. Let's do another fill here. Uh, depth shadow. Sure, let's make that red. So you see the effect in the background as I fill that in. By the way, you can fade the artwork as it's displayed up over here. Now, probably the easiest way to show you this is instead of showing you this in-depth demo, by the way, there are a couple of them that you can go ahead and check out here. Uh, so if you want to see, for example, here, this is being driven and again, entirely created with a node network. You can see all these different nodes being created over here. Uh, you drill down into them. Once again, entirely node draft driven. They all work together to create the end thing, but let's just go ahead and create one ourselves. So we're going to go here, file, new, create a new document here, 1080p document. All right. So super simple. It's got all your typical vector graphics tools. So here you can see, uh, let me just by the way, there is undo. So let's come up here. We'll do fill. So we got a red square like this, and then we've got a circle. Let's make that circle blue, and then like that. It's pretty straightforward vector graphic stuff. Again, I can grab one, I can grab the other, and then I can do things like layer, boolean, subtract front. So there we now have this new shape, which is this one taken out of this very typical stuff that you do in the world of vector graphics, right? Well, now what we can do is go on over here, take a look at our node graph, and this is what was generated. So you see here our blue ellipse and our red square were both generated here. Anytime I could grab one of these things, so there is the transform, so I could I can move that particular shape around. There you see the immediate result as I'm moving it around over there. Uh, and then it, it, any one of these things can be edited. So I could go back to the raw form of our lips. We could change out the initial sizes of it. Entirely procedural driven. Very cool stuff. Any one of these you can actually go into and turn it into an input. It's right there. And then I can have a value that comes in here and set that one up as an import for that value. Or if you are like the less artistically inclined and you instead of wanting to use their tools, instead of using these tools over here to create, say, text like this, what I actually do is I could come in here, create a new node, create a node of type text, like there, like that. And then let's come in here with our text selected and we will call this all your base. Uh, this is ultimately a vector it is creating. So let's do the same thing. Let's add a transform to it so we can put it somewhere in the world. So I transform. And then we will fill it, fill, like so. And then now we've got that. We can change the fill. So we could change our text color, make our text, let's make it this green color right here. And then finally, we will merge that out. So do a merge and then just a generalized merge like this. Uh, and I think I actually want to change it. So there goes to there. And then our Boolean output instead comes in as an input to there. 
And then this goes to here, like so. So now if we take a look at our shape, there it is, all your base. And now, because there's a transform attached to that, I should be able to grab this and move it around like so, resize it, do whatever I want with it, and then go back over to the node graph, and it's just updated our values accordingly. So it changed the transform or whatever, and I can go ahead and move that however I want. Once again, I can also take any one of these values and expose it as a parameter like so, and then I could do, um, say, a random number generator into there, random number into our translation, which is kind of meaningless because it's only translating one value, but you get an idea of how all these things can work together. It is a very, very cool application capable of doing, again, your traditional vector graphics drawy stuff. You can completely ignore the noise behind the scenes and just use this as a vector graphics app. You've got your traditional uh, pens, so drawing tool that way, uh, and then we've got uh, normal lines, it's chugging right now. That's one of those things you're going to find. One thing you're going to notice is for me hitting escape. Yeah, we're running a web application here. But don't worry. Don't let that put you off. Let's get back to the details of it. So this is called Graphite, and it is graphite.rs. Now, you notice at the very end there, it did start chugging. It started slowing down when I did whatever I was doing there. This is an alpha. You're going to have to keep that in mind. But the potential here is just staggeringly unreal what this is capable of. So the big thing I want you to not be worried about is this line right here. So this is desktop first and web ready. So there's no download yet. You can only run it in your browser at this point in time to do that go to editor.graphite.rs. However, it all runs locally. It's basically a web app. It doesn't require a server thing. And there is a Windows, Linux, and Mac version coming in 2025. It's also not really a web app per se, so this isn't running like an Electron or anything like that. Uh, it is designed as a desktop app, primarily runs in your browser for quick casual usage, it is built for speed with nearly no JavaScript. Uh, it's written primarily in Rust, by the way. Uh, regardless of platform, your work runs locally and privately on your own hardware. There is no server involved. Uh, so uh, that's kind of the details here for now. You can install it as a personal web application for a desktop-like experience, but the desktop version is coming this year. So don't worry, this is not per se a web app, although uh, it can run quick in your browser uh, thanks to WebAssembly and WebGPU. By the way, if you do that, come in here, File, Preferences, and turn on the Velo Renderer if your browser supports WebGPU. It should run a little bit faster as a result. So uh, very, very interesting application. Uh, and then where it gets most interesting is where it's going. So right now, this is a vector graphics. They're going to have raster coming more and more of these raster tools are coming online. Right now, uh, it has vector editing tools, procedural workflow for graphics design. It is free and open source forever and a node based layers. And it's got a number of things that are coming soon. We'll get back to that in just a second because we're going to go over here. You go to the feature section, you get a full breakdown of all the features available with this guy. Again, uh, built with Rust, powered by Graphene. That's the node-based engine on the back end. Here's where they're at right now. So right now we are sitting at Alpha 4. It's been in development for a number of years now. So this is not a new tool per se. This new version added parametric animation and instance server repeating, but look at what they're looking to add. So again, desktop apps are coming very, very soon, which is a good thing. Um, a GPU accelerated raster rendering coming soon, brush tools being rewritten, uh, raw photo processing, stylus support, and so on. And then we get into beta. We got even more things like a shape builder uh, and asset libraries in a marketplace, predictive graph rendering. And then for the 1.0 release, uh, procedural style paint brushes, CAD like constraints, PDF exporting, uh, all of those things, animated SVG creation, so many cool things in the work here. So there is a ton that are going to be added to this tool at least on the roadmap, that is the plan. Uh, and yeah, it's, and even today, it's already quite useful. If you're doing vector graphics work, you can come in here and you can export your work out as PNG, JPEG, or SVG. By the way, this entire project is completely open source. So again, it's called Graphite. It is available up on GitHub. Uh, it is under the Apache 2 license, which is a very liberal license in terms of what it allows you to do. It is updated pretty much constantly. So that was 10 hours ago. Yeah, still 10 hours ago. So it's getting updated pretty much daily. If you like what they're doing, come on in here, drop them a star. A very interesting project. By the way, 85% of it is in Rust, which would be why it is .rs at the end of the name. So ladies and gentlemen, that 
is Graphite, uh, a really, really cool open source project. I do hope those desktop versions come soon. Again, being 88, 89% in Rust, it was always designed as a desktop application. They're doing a web build for it. So uh, if you're one of those people that hates web applications, don't let that put you off. This is a very cool tool with a hell of a lot of potential. So let me know what you think. Have you checked it out? Are you going to? Let me know in the comments down below. And quite simply, Graphite is pretty awesome. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you later. Goodbye.